All right, back in a hotel room and we're talking Vision Pro again, except the last time I did that, uh, I got to actually put on the headset and use it for like 30 to 40 minutes. Not quite this time. Um, I actually just got to work with the OS and you can actually mess around with Vision OS if you want to by doing the same thing I did, which is downloading the brand new uh, Xcode 15 beta, but also the new simulator for Vision OS 1.0. And so uh, when you open up the simulator, it gives you kind of a, not I'm not going to say a feel of how it would be to wear the headset, because that is not something you can simulate. But what it does simulate is the software, the UI, the apps, the different, you know, things like Control Center and where you can place certain apps and how the windows can be resized. And again, it's not kind of how I experienced it when I wore the headset, but it is a good representation of like, you know, how it's going to be for developers to develop their apps and what their apps for Vision OS will look like, as well as how apps look when you port them over from an iPhone or existing iPad app. Uh, so this is the home screen, albeit it's a little bit bare, but nonetheless, this is the main home screen for Vision OS. And my guess is that you'll be able to customize these apps here and you'll be able to put them into folders. As you can see, there's already a pre-existing folder uh, that's quote unquote compatible apps, which we'll dive into in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, this is what you'll use for your home screen. You can probably customize your folders and your uh, apps and put them wherever you'd like. But for now, this is kind of the default setting of what I have. And the apps are bare because this is, again, a simulation. But if you click here, this little carrot icon or this arrow icon at the top, this is what will give you your uh, kind of like settings and other options where you'll find control center. But so your first uh, option is the home screen. You can bring that back or you can dismiss it. Uh, then you'll have your environment, which is kind of just changing the light mode, dark mode, or having it on automatic for the environment. Then you'll have your control center, uh, which has a very familiar look and feel if you've ever used any Apple device that has a control center, primarily an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like for the most part, but there are some differences. And one of the key differences that I wanted to bring up is that you can actually have uh, a guest mode for Vision Pro. And so what it is, is you enable this and you set a password and then you have within five minutes to hand off your Vision Pro to somebody else. They enter in that password and then uh, they can experience Vision Pro for however long I'm guessing they'd like to. I don't think it's within that five minute timeline. I think that's just how long you have to give that Vision Pro to somebody. Uh, but uh, yeah, they can't like go into your personal data and your messages and things like that. I think it's just kind of like a very bare bones. I'm guessing, I, I don't really know for sure because the simulator doesn't show that. But my guess is that this is so that other people can't dive into your personal data, check out your messages, FaceTime friends that they don't know or whatever the case may be. Uh, but then they can experience the Vision Pro for themselves. Because my guess is if you're one of the first cool kids on the block to get the Vision Pro, uh, there's going to be a lot of people lining up at your door potentially wanting to try it. And so uh, this is cool that Apple has built in a guest mode. So if we bring up our home screen, you can see that all of the apps here are currently available. It's pretty bare bones again, like I said. But before we dive into those apps, uh, you see this little tab here off to the left side. That's going to be the way you can change from your apps like UI, the people, which is basically a fancy FaceTime menu. Obviously, I don't have contacts on here, but this is where you would go to uh, go and communicate with people and FaceTime. Uh, and then you have your environments. Now, these are different than the environment that I was talking about earlier with changing your light and dark. That's just kind of changing the UI environment. Uh, this is changing the environment as in terms of like going into a completely different part of the world. Like you can see all the different options here. Mount Hood is the famous one that people have been talking about for those who actually got to try the headset because that's the one that Apple demoed for us. And so, yeah, none of them work right now, but uh, these are where all your different environments that you're going to want to be immersed in will be located. In terms of apps and how they behave, it is a little bit awkward because your first instinct is to just use your keyboard and mouse like you would use a keyboard and mouse but you kind of have to remember like you're mimicking gestures on it so you have to click and hold to like swipe up and down so once you figure that out it, it gets pretty uh fluid but um trying to use multiple windows does not look or feel the same as when you actually have the headset on my guess is there's just more space to work with when actually wearing the headset because i could actually have three full-size apps without them overlapping or hiding into the background but yeah, for the sake of this demo, the apps can be resized at the co the corners, like the bottom right corner here. You can move them around by dragging the little bar at the bottom. And this little circle next to that bar here is obviously to close out the app when you're all done with it. The apps here in the home screen are ones that are made for Vision OS.
OS. They look really, really good. They interact well with your environment. Safari works as you'd expect, and watching videos on YouTube was not something that I tested out. I had pre-made videos uh, for the demos that were already kind of set for me to watch. But here I pulled up the MacRumors channel and I'm watching the uh, Vision Pro video uh, from when I did that a couple weeks ago. And so you can see when you go into full screen, it gets rid of everything else and gives you this giant large screen that I'm guessing would be way more immersive when you have the Vision Pro actually on and watching. So that was pretty cool to see how like browser videos would actually work and using things like YouTube. Um, so that was something that I wanted to try out. And so messing around with the other apps like settings and files, it's pretty bare bones. Photos, again, this is how it looked like on the demo, but I had like actual 3D photos and videos made for me to watch. Um, obviously I have nothing here, but uh, Freeform is looking like it's made for Vision OS. A lot of these apps, again, these were made for Vision OS, but if you go into that compatible apps folder, there you can see the, the apps that were ported over via iPhone or iPad. And one of the things about those apps specifically is that there's a little icon at the top here where you can kind of adjust it into a longer portrait style window. So um, I prefer that with these non-compatible Vision OS, well, oh, I shouldn't say not compatible, but not made for Vision OS apps. Uh, they look a lot better in like that horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical format. And so that is a quick toggle there at the top. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I'm hoping a lot of developers actually develop apps for Vision OS because uh, it looks a lot better when you do that compared to just porting over the iPhone and iPad apps. But of course, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. How do you feel about this little brief walkthrough of Vision OS and how things work? Are you going to try it out for yourself? Again, it's not that hard. Just download Xcode, the beta 15 version, um, if you have a developer account, and you can go ahead and download it. And then it'll automatically ask you to download the simulator if you'd like, and you can do that there. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool to mess around with and see how things work. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.